Okay, one more minute. We'll start one minute, one minute. So I'm gonna basically just let you guys ask questions today. I don't have anything prepared. Are some of you transferring uh, next semester? Yeah. Do you guys know where you guys are going? So where are you going, Josh? That was Hans, not me. I am though. Okay. I'll go UCLA, baby. Oh wow, that's cool. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You're doing math, huh? Yeah, math, uh, math econ. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. So you're going to understand all those formulas for trading options and all this stuff? <laughs> yeah. Fractals, fractals, uh, option, option. All these uh, partial derivatives. Yeah. yeah. All these partial equations. Yeah. 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 You need to teach me those someday. I'll come back. Yeah. yeah. Are you mostly taking CSM classes or Kenya? Are you Kenya the student or CSM student? Uh, CSM. CSM. Oh, okay. Your your two class. I mean, uh, I've taken three Kenyatta classes. Yeah, and two of them were yours. Okay. Hey Josh, do you know Rance, Bobo? Uh, the dude who emails. Probably. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I just see his emails. I don't know who he is though. Okay, so he's part of our. He's the STEM Center is like university connection person. We have one student that graduated either last year or two years ago. That's at UCLA doing math. If you reach out to him, maybe he could connect you with, uh, with her. See how her experience has been like. Oh, for sure. That sounds yeah, yeah. That sounds good, actually. Uh, is that lot Natalie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She taught my classes here. Yeah. 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 She's good. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, we are starting then. Okay. So, uh, whatever you guys want me to do, I have nothing prepared, guys. Okay. Because last time I did all this. <coughs> Um, application on principal component analysis. I think it's a little bit too much. You guys probably have your mind something else, thinking more about the final instead of the applications. So you have any specific questions or specific topic you want me to talk about? No. No one has any questions. We can also just talk about how we can improve the class. Could you do a, like a, a word problem, like the last question on the last test? The last question on the last test. Okay. Like a word problem, like a theory oh. one. Oh, the okay. <laughs> I'm pulling it up now. Don't remember which problem it was.
the last problem on the last test, I did. No, like a problem similar to that, like a word problem. I like did that. that. I did yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah, you did. Oh, okay. You you talk about similar problems. Yeah, anything similar to that. Okay. Make you All think. right. I understand. I understand what you want now. I understand. I'm going to just take some problems from the book. Okay. And then we are going to just work on that together. Uh, oh, I can even just put the book underneath the camera. Let me, let me choose some problem here. <coughs> Yeah, there was one semester I actually had a competition between the students. Like a curve or, or no, a, no, a competition, friendly game? No, no, no. Competition, in set, I mean, at the end of the semester, I divide them into three groups and work on this type of conceptual problems and see which group wins. It was just for kind of for fun. You know what I'm talking about? No, but, but now I, since I don't have those problems right in front of me, I'm hunting for more conceptual problems here and there. Okay, maybe I, instead of that, maybe I make them up then, okay? There you go. Yeah, maybe I can make them up. Maybe that's better. I don't know. I'll try. There should be, a, there are a lot of those type of problems in the ball. Okay, we'll just look at this. How much can you guys see? Can you guys see the ball? Are you guys able to see? Yeah, I can. I can actually enlarge it. Okay. Number 15, what do you guys think? Number 15. Okay, cool. Everybody get that? You guys get that? Yes. 16? Our book actually has a lot of good problems. Well, what do you think, 16? Five by five matrix. Is it invertible to be invertible? Is it possible if its columns do not span R5? Do not spend R5. Can we think, can you guys think about the pivots of those? Can you think about the pivot of those, um, of that matrix? Will every row have a pivot? No, no people on every row. Yeah. There will be some rows which does not have a pivot. Because otherwise it will spend R5, right? If some rows do not have a pivot, does it mean that some column also does not have a pivot? Yes. Yes. Okay. Some column don't have pivot. That column will contain, it's a, will be a free variable. 
we have a free variable there. So are the columns linearly independent? No, linearly dependent. So linearly dependent. Okay. So it's so it's not possible then. Okay. So the answer is that <coughs> number sixteen is not possible. How about seventeen? How come I get keep getting this thing on my? I already say do not disturb on this thing. And I still get this message. Anybody know how I can turn my phone off so I don't get this notification on messages? I don't know about notifications, but you can get in airplane mode if you want, and you probably won't get any messages. Yeah, the problem is that I have Wi-Fi on. I mean, I have airplane mode on earlier, and then it's still getting it. Uh, then I don't know. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm just wondering because <laughs> I this thing keep popping up. Okay, seventeen. What do you guys think about seventeen? <laughs> invertible. Invertible. What does that mean? Invertible, one of the conditions is that the columns are going to be linearly dependent, right? Uh, independent, right? Is that right? We used that property earlier in the number 15 and 16. <clears throat> if A is invertible, A, is A inverse also invertible? Yes. Okay. If A is invertible, A inverse is also in, in, invertible. So there's a people on every row. So and every column. Independent. So it's independent. Yeah. So gotcha. number 17 is yes. Statement is true. That's the explanation. How about 18? <laughs> You guys want to think about 18? C is like a, okay, so it's like a transformation. It's possible. Consistent for every, Oh, that's right. Consistent for every choice of V. What does it mean to what the, how 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 can it be? So so what does it say, say about the pivots? There's a pivot in every column. Uh, consistent for every choice of that means a pivot for every row. Row, oh, okay. And because of a pivot in every row and the matrix is square, every there will be a column. pivot on every column. Column then is it possible for the equation CX equal to V has more than one solution? No. It's always unique solution because there's a pivot on every row column. column. Okay. That is another way to say that for this square matrix, six by six matrix, okay, represent a transformation which is the first sentence consistent for every V in R6. That means that transformation is on two. Okay, because it's on two and it's a square matrix, then it's also one to one. There's another way to say that. I mean, so on two is always one to one if the matrix is square. Okay. All right. So how about this one? Uh, you cannot actually see it that easily because of my 
that set up. I cannot push it there. Okay. Let me see what I should do. Okay, I'll just write it here. Okay, what do you think? Oh, you cannot see. Okay, let me make it smaller. Okay, what do you think about this? True or false? This one is a little bit harder. You guys can think about this. Do you guys uh, have, I mean, it's really playing around with these properties and pivots and all this stuff. Let me know if you have some suggestion. I'll let you stare at it for a little while. Sorry, keep having this shadow there. <coughs> Okay, columns of A's are linearly independent. Can you just tell me what type of implication? There are many implications. Just randomly throw out some implication. Invertible. Just, yes. Because it's square, it's invertible. Okay. So square is invertible. Okay. Why is, why is A square invertible? Because I mean, it, it's a square matrix. It's A is invertible and because it, it's literally independent. I don't know about A squared. Okay, so A is invertible. So you know A is invertible. Okay. That's good. So I A. Need, I need the trivial solution. Okay. Uh, it only have trivial solution. Okay. So both, both ways that you guys talk about, both can lead to the same conclusion, the correct conclusion. It's just different ways of thinking about it. So <laughs> A linearly, columns of A linearly independent, okay? I'm gonna use this implication. That means if this is true, then the next thing is true. Uh, columns, this one means, uh, a x equal to zero has only triple solution. Now, what does that mean? That means if this line here means that if A x equal to zero, then x equal to zero, right? You guys understand this line? This yes. thing I circle is the same as this box? Yes. Okay. Now, if AX equal to zero has only three solution, how about, which is this guy? 
How about if I start out with this? A squared x equal to zero. That means A times AX is equal to zero. Now, what does it say about this? A times something equal to zero. A times something equal to zero. Then that thing has to be zero, right? Yeah. So then it contains. So, also contains. so AX has to be zero. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yes, okay. And because AX equal to zero, then going back to this, X has to be zero. Can you guys see that? Do you guys know what I did? I used this property twice. A times something equal to zero, that something has to be zero. But that something is AX. This something is AX. So now I have AX equal to zero. And because A times X equal to zero, so X has to be zero. So it stays independent no matter what power you put it to. Yes, yes. So that means that means now I show that, I just show that, I have just shown that if this guy, then this guy, right? So I show that if a squared x equal to zero, then a, then x equal to zero. Okay. Okay. So that means columns of a squared. linearly independent. And because column of a square linearly independent, the square expand has a, has a pivot on every column because it's a square matrix, has a pivot on every row. And that's why this guy spans our end. It's okay. <laughs> then you have to write it down. Okay. So the answer is yes. Okay, I'm gonna, you guys think about it. I'll try to pick up some other stuff. Our book has a lot of this type of problems. The difficulty is that when you are doing this on the online homework, it becomes something that they kind of walk you through and you don't learn as much. I'm gonna get something with the eigenvalues, eigenvectors stuff. Hi, sir. Yes. Can we go over the homework uh, about chapter seven? It's seven uh, seven point one nineteen. Seven point one nineteen. <laughs> You mean here? Oh, sorry. It's the it's from the pseudo canvas. Huh? Not this one. I, I'm not sure if that's the same one, maybe. From from my MATLAB? Yeah. It must be number 19 must be that one though. Okay. Can we just try that one? Okay. I see. I'm going to copy down the matrix.
Did they tell you what the eigenvalues are? Okay, I call it now. Okay. Okay. You guys all understand this, what the question is? You guys are okay with the question? Yes. Okay. So they give you the eigen value. Because otherwise you have to factorize a cubic equation, then it's harder. So maybe maybe you can tell me, <coughs> maybe you can tell me what was the difficulty. I forgot who asked the question. Was okay, it yeah. Jason? I mean, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, I I having difficulty in finding the U two, U one is totally fine, but in finding U two, I always find the wrong answer. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I understand. So uh, I think <coughs> uh, the issue you're facing is probably <coughs> with uh, the Gram-Smith process. You have to make sure that, okay, do, do you remember which one has double root? Uh, oh, those two are double root. I think, uh, let me see. One of those will be double root. Yeah. Okay, we can try to figure it out. That's uh, seven. Seven? So seven occurred twice, right? Yeah. So when you subtract seven from here, you subtract seven, you're going to have uh, minus four, minus one, minus four, minus two, four, minus two, Two, four, two, minus four. Okay. When you do RLEF, all these lines are basically the same. Yeah. All of them are the same. So it's going to be one, one half, and negative one. Okay. Yeah. So you will have. Uh, x2 equal to x2, x3 equal to x3, x1 is equal to minus one half x2 minus a uh, plus x3. Do you agree? Yeah. So the two vectors Okay, <coughs> I'm, go <coughs> I'm going to call this V1 is negative one half one zero and V2 is going to be one zero one. Yeah. Now this one, I don't like, I don't like the fractions. Are you still with me? Yeah. But these two are not orthogonal. Okay, we want to be doing orthogonal. So you have to do Gram-Smith process on these two. Yeah. Are you aware of it? Yeah. You are okay. aware of it. I found my mistake. Okay. <laughs> you can just use these two. Yeah. Using these two directly will not work. Yeah. So. Okay. Did I answer your question now or? Yeah, 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 I already thought, got it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So you need to do Graham Smith on those two guys. Yeah, actually, I, I, I missed, I just did the wrong calculating. Okay, I got it. Okay, that's fine. When you use that process, does it matter which, how you label it? No. 
Okay. No, it does not does not matter. You can use this one as the first one and change the second one, or okay. use this one as the first one and change the other one. Okay. Okay. But eventually you have to divide by the magnitude to make it <coughs> unit length. Right. I'm going to look for some other conceptual problem. Uh, this one is kind of a good one. I think I went through this with you in class, this problem here. Number 17. Can you guys look at number 17? Can you guys see? Yes. yes. Oh, was it the one I want? No. I mean, I mean 18, guys. I mean 18, not 17. I mean number 18. Do you want me to enlarge it? Yes. There you go. That's better. Is it better? Okay, sorry. It's a little bit too good. Uh, this is talking about when is this guy diagonalizable? Because you have one, three, and five, right? Can you guys see the eigen the eigen values are one, three, and five? Yes. And five occur twice. Yes. yes. So for it to be diagonalizable, you want Two eigenvectors. Okay. You want the five, the eigenspace for lambda equal to five to have dimension two. <coughs> so this problem can be rephrased somewhat by just saying that find the value of x so that the a is diagonalizable. Okay. So how do we do that? You just need to make sure that the dimension you just go through the calculation. What is the condition? What value of x will get you two free variables, right? Is that what you say? When you subtract five from this matrix, a minus five lambda i. Are you guys following what I'm talking about? I'm going to start have to write it down soon. Yes. You follow it. Do you guys want to try it yourself first or what do you guys want to want to do? Do you want to try it? Sure. Yeah, go ahead and try it and see whether you come up with some answer.
Anybody has answers? Answer. You guys know what to do, right? I hope. Okay, do you want me to work together with you on this or you want to try a little bit longer? Are you guys still there? Is it, is it six? Six? It might be six, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I think it might be six. I don't know. Uh, we can walk through this together. Okay. And you can explain to me why is it six? I got negative six. Oh, negative six? It might be negative six. I don't really know which one it is. We have to work on this. Okay. So this guy here. You subtract five, right? So this becomes zero, this becomes zero. This becomes negative two. This becomes negative four. Are you guys with me? Yes. So this guy is already free. Okay, this guy's definitely pivot. Okay, it's a pivot there. Yeah? Then this guy has pivot. Okay. So we want to make sure that, we want to make sure that uh, this one is, so we have one pivot, two pivot. We don't want to have any pivot here. Okay. Um, am I missing something? I may be missing something though. Did I do something wrong, guys? You subtract five, that's correct, right? Okay. Maybe I just write it out. So, a, a minus five i will be zero. Minus two, six minus one, zero minus two, h. Okay. 
I, I know what I'm doing now. I, I think I know what I did wrong. Okay, that one is not tailored. Okay, so this, uh, so this guy here, I, I know what is going on now. Okay, so we want to make sure that. So I need to, I need to continue to do one more step. Okay, because these two look the same. Okay, they look the same. So I will have to do one step like this. To zero this guy out, how do I zero this guy out? R two minus R one. Are you guys with me? Oh my god! Can see. Okay, so this is zero zero. R two minus R one. H minus six. One. Zero zero. Zero four. Zero zero zero. Now this last one. I can do, I'm going to combine them. I'm going to do our four equal to our four plus our three. Okay. So this is better now. So you have three variable here. <coughs> okay. And this one is a pivot. Okay. And this one you have also a pivot, the pivot is here and here. So we want, we want to make sure that this one is, what do we want this to be? For this to be a free variable? Zero. Want this to be zero. So we need x minus six equal to zero, so which is x equal to six. Okay, so I think we got it. Is it all right? Yes. Sorry, I'm a little bit messy. I will try to just write over this and then it confu I confuse myself. I say, okay. Okay. Okay, I'm going to find some more problems for you to do. Okay, we have some we have some uh, conceptual problems here. Are you guys able to see number twenty one? I will make it slightly bigger, not too big. Number twenty one. Let's go through 21 hours together, okay? Is, is A correct? Is part A correct? Think about part A. I don't think so. I think you can't just say some matrix D. Very good, Luca. Very good, Luca. So what does what is the condition on D? What additional thing they have to say to make it true? D has to have the eigenvalues. D has to be a diagonal matrix, right? right? D need to be diagonal matrix. If they if they modify it by just saying that force some diagonal matrix D. They're just missing the word diagonal in front of the matrix. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. You understand it well, Luca. Good. B, part B.
What do you guys think? I think it matters how many eigenvectors there are. Well, it has a basis of eigenvectors. A basis, Rn has a, for, for this to be a basis in Rn, it will have to have, so a basis of R3 has how many vectors? Three. Yeah, a basis of R4 has four vectors. Okay. So uh, when they say if Rn has a basis of eigenvectors, that means it, already, it say that it has n eigenvectors. Okay. And I think it's diagonalizable. Yes. Yes. Very good. So other people agree how we make the conclusion? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Let's look at Pasi. I think that's true. Okay. Uh, because I, then it will have n eigenvectors. It has n eigenvalues, so it doesn't say it has n eigenvectors. But if it has n eigenvalues counting multiplicities, then it should have n eigenvectors, right? Not really, because there can be counting multiplicity, right? You can have like a certain eigenvalue occur twice, then you will need the corresponding eigenspace to have dimension two. I see. And this does not guarantee it, right? So you need more information. Yes. Okay. So. So it's not true. Mm -hmm. Because you actually need the eigenspace to have the full dimension. You need geometric multiplicity to be equal to algebraic multiplicity. This is kind of related to the problem we just did, the x equal to six. So in that case, when x is not equal to six, <coughs> then it will not be diagonalizable. That particular problem we just did. When x is not equal to six, will be a counter example for this. Do you guys follow? We just did the problem, you remember? <coughs> this guy, we say x has to be equal to six. This guy here, when x is not equal to six, you're gonna have too many papers, not enough free variables. Then you will not have enough eigenvector. Is it okay? Yes. Part D.
I think it's true because to be di diagonalizable, it has to have eigenvectors that are linearly independent, which means it's linearly independent, which means it's invertible. What happens if the eigenvalue is zero? So does every, every does everybody agree with Lucas' argument? So Lucas thinks that this is true. <coughs> Does anyone think it's false? I agree with Luca. You agree that it's true? Yes. Any, anyone disagree with Josue and Luca? You probably do, Professor. <laughs> what? I think you disagree if you're asking. So. <laughs> yeah, I disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I need to provide a context. You can just have a zero matrix. It's my context example. That's my context example. I don't even have to diagonalize. It's already diagonal matrix. So my P is just identity. So um. A equal to P, okay. P, P inverse, and P is equal to identity. D is itself, is A itself. <laughs> is it okay? Is that the only counter example to that statement? Uh, there are many counter examples, as long as you have an eigenvalue of zero. Okay. So you can choose. <laughs> Yeah, one was one. Let me make it small. You can also choose A equal to this. You can choose any diagonal matrix, uh, which is with a double eigenvalue of zero. 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 So basically the theorem is say, the, there's a theorem actually say that. The theorem is that A is, okay, uh, if A is, okay, I, I'm not sure whether that's a theorem or not. Uh, Let me look at that. Let me look at that thing again. Yeah. Anytime you have, uh, yeah, so I, I don't know whether I have a theorem, but basically what happened is that diag being diagonalizable and being invertible are slightly different, okay? So if you choose any A, any diagonal matrix with some zeros on the diagonal, then it's a counter example because in that case, zero will be an eigenvalue, okay? If you choose a diagonal matrix, by definition, it's diagonalizable. It is already diagonalized, okay? And if you have a zero, the diagonal matrix that has a zero in the diagonal, that means the entire column is zero, then it's not going to be invertible. So I could have choose, can I choose this? One, two, three, zero, four, five, six. And this would be also a counter example because the zero there. Is it okay? This is not invertible because this whole column is zero. But it's already a diagonal matrix. So that would be a good counter example. You guys getting it? 
If it if we look at it the other way around, can you say that that's true? If it yes. is invertible, then it is diagonalizable. Uh, the other way around. If it is invertible, uh, no. If it's invertible, doesn't mean this. No, it doesn't mean it's diagonalizable. If it is invertible, you still have to have. You still have. You still have to have enough eigenvectors. Okay. Even though the original matrix is invertible, okay. You still have to have enough eigenvectors. Back to the same <coughs> example we did earlier. Back to this example we did earlier. The original matrix. Uh, too bad I already overwrite it. The original matrix look like this. Let me use another piece of paper. The original matrix in that example. The original matrix. Sorry, I have all this other stuff. Original matrix look like this. Let's say just pick an X. Uh, we say that X equal to six will be diagonalizable. Just pick X equal to some number. Okay, just put two there. Okay, this one is not diagonalizable. But is this guy invertible? The original matrix, is it invertible? It is invertible. We has four pivots, the original matrix. Okay. So Luca, what you're trying to say is that if A is invertible, then it is diagonalizable. I just gave you a counter example. Okay, I see that. You see my counter example, right? Yeah. Very good. I think you're I think you're you're able to follow all this stuff logically, which is very good. You should change your major to math from engineering. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, no? <Luca>. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. Okay. So we have some time. We'll do some more. Would you do any on two and uh, one two? Oh, no things. Okay, I can if you want. I just Unless have someone to... else has something. On to and one to one and all this stuff. I just need to get to the correct section. I don't even remember which section it is. It's chapter one, right? Is it chapter one? Okay. Yes, I'm good. It's like the end of chapter one. End of chapter one. It's ah. 1.9. Yeah. Yeah, they have. Okay, I'm gonna just randomly randomly pick a question here.
Okay. This is one for nine stuff. Uh, can you see number 23? Okay. Number 23, part A. Are you guys able to see it? Yes. Other people, other people able to see it? Part A, is it true or false? Do you guys understand what it's saying? Do you understand the columns of the N by N identity matrix? How it looked like? Yes. Okay. So if you know, if you know, those are called those are called uh, those are called E one, E two, E n, right? That's what it's called. Those are the columns. Okay, I'm just redo this. So identity matrix here is E1, E2, EN. You can imagine how each of these look like now, hopefully. Yeah, so it's saying you're multiplying directly to get the transformation on the identity. So you know, they basically saying that if you have a linear transformation, and you already know these results, okay? You're given this. You already know this, okay? You already know all these guys. You know TE1, TE2, TEN. You know all those. Does it fully specify the linear transformation? Because in that case, you remember the A, it's just this guy, right? So your linear transformation Tx is just equal to Ax. This A is called the standard matrix for the linear transformation. So as long as you know each of these, as long as you know each of these, <coughs> you will know everything <coughs> about the linear transformation. Because T of X, now if X is equal to this is my x, it's x1, x2, up to xn. So t of x is just t, x1, e1, plus x2, e2, plus all the way to xn, en. Do you guys know what happened here? This is x. x this x can be written, this x can be written like this. Can you see the correspondence? Because it's x1 yes. times a one and a bunch of zero, right? Okay. Do you have do you guys see this? This is the same as x. It's just x times the identity matrix. Yeah, 
it's x times identity matrix. Yes, yes. This whole express expression is i times x. Yes. So because the transformation is linear, the fact that it's linear, you can distribute this and pull the constant out. And because of this, this is written, can be written as this. Okay, so this one is A times X. Okay, so once you know the effect of the linear transformation, on the columns of the identity matrix, you know the entire linear transformation. And we actually use this many times, right? When we do problems, like you give your rotation refractions in some of the test problems, and you ask you for the matrix of the linear transformation, all you do is to just see what happened to those basis vectors. And then after you, once you know that you just took the columns together and then you get your A. Yes, sir. is it okay? Yes. I guess we can do one more, part B. Can you guys see part B? It's saying that a rotation is linear. A rotation about the origin is linear. Now, what does linear mean? Linear means that T of X1 plus X2 is equal to Tx1 plus Tx2, okay? These are conditions for linear. T of C X1 is equal to C T. Uh, I probably shouldn't use. I mean, I'm going to use other notation. That notation is not really that good. I'm, I'm going to, so condition for linear. T of U plus V equal to T U plus T V T of C U equal to C T U. Okay, those are the two conditions. Now, if it is a rotation about the origin, that means you add the two vectors, you add the two vectors first, add them first, and then rotate. Is it the same as rotate them first and then add? Yes. Okay, so this check out. The second one say, you scale a vector, make them longer and then rotate. Is it the same as rotating them and then make them longer? Yep. I make the vector longer and then rotate. Let's say I make it twice as long and then rotate. Is it the same as I rotate and then make it twice as long? Same result, yes. Okay. So part B, so part B here is also yes. Okay, so the answer is yes. Okay, so I think I should stop here. Uh, we have five minutes. How should we, how can we in the future improve this, especially on the, especially on the um, area concerning distance learning, because in four, that's also very likely will be online again. So you guys have any feedback you want to say in the remaining five minutes of the semester? Oh, by the way, you guys all know when the final is, right? <laughs> 